Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyanam Janashalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shreshtam Manamapi Satiputra Matra Swarupam Rupam Tasyagrata Murupuring Mathurim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasham Prapto yasya pratita kripaya shri gurum tam natosmi. Vande ham shri guru shri ataf padakamalam shri gurun vaishnavams cha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana raghunatan vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam sabadhutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Shri Vishnu Sahasranama name 631 is Sarvatas Chakshuhu So you can get the general idea of that name Sarvata is the idea of everything, everyone, everywhere, in all respects, every, every, sarva. And chakshuhu is eyes. So, the obvious meaning, he has eyes to see everything. And another meaning is, he who makes himself visible to everyone. Everyone can see him. The atheist will challenge, can you show me God? Yeah, well, who has got the eyes to see, he sees God everywhere. How can you not see him? If you can see, you see him. Because he manifests himself everywhere. Can you see the wind? Can you see the wind? Well, you can. can look, look, at, look at all the plants. What's that? You can see the wind. The effect, by the effect you can see, isn't it? So we can, we can see that the wind is blowing. If you say there's no wind, it's just, it's insane, it's, it's meaningless, it's nonsense. So we see God, we may or may not see him directly, but by the effect, everything is going on. Maya dhyakshena prakritihi suyate sacharacharam hetunane na kaunteya jagad viparivartate By his overseeing, exactly the word adhyaksha, the word exactly means the same as in English, oversee. Aksha again means eyes and adhi means above. So he oversees the whole material energy. He brings into being suyate, sachara, suya, they know the word prasuti, maybe you know the word. It, it, just like you see in the, uh, the maternity hospital, prasuti ghar, means the, uh, prasuti means giving birth. So suyate brings into being everything that is uh, Moving and non-moving. <laughs> so the whole world, the, 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 the ultimate cause is the Supreme Personality of God. So how can we not see Him? But if we don't have the eyes, or if we're a damn stubborn fool idiot number one, not number one, maybe number one million, one trillion, <laughs> whatever, there are so many. So we don't see God. Show me God. You can't see, even if He's shown to you. Very good example is there in Mahabharata. Um, now, 
he is visible to all. This is particularly true when Krishna appears in this world. He appears in this world. Rama, Rishinga, Varaha, Kurma, Krishna. Everyone can see him, but they might not recognize him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They may think he's just some ordinary person, or they may think that I'm superior to him. There are many people who thought they were superior to Krishna. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it, how people can be so, so stupid. <laughs> anyway, from Mahabharata we know that Krishna, although he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he acts in many ways as if he was an ordinary person. <laughs> so one of the things, one of his activities was to act as an, uh, a peace emissary for the Pandavas. We, in Kantipuram there's that one temple, Pandavaduta. Pan, Pandavadutam, Krishna, means he's the the duta, the, the messenger, the um, emissary, ambassador. There are so many words can be, be used of the Pandavas. He went to sue for peace. So Duryodhana knew Krishna was coming and he thought, oh, well, there's this, these Pandavas, they love Krishna so much. He knew they love Krishna. So let us capture Krishna and then he, he's coming, so we'll capture him. And then they'll be so distraught, they won't have any energy to fight. Now that's completely against the rules of politics and diplomacy. That the, the messenger should be... The, if there's the messenger between two parties, even if they're terrible enemies, the messenger from the enemy has to be treated or, or not treated as an enemy. Otherwise, the whole system of messengering, nowadays messengering, messaging, it means something with a phone, isn't it? Send a message. But the whole system breaks down, and then there's no diplomacy, and there's only fighting. And even if you want to have peace, you can't have it, because you can't send anyone as a messenger if, if you're afraid they're going to have their head cut off. So it's, it's just a matter of practicality since time immemorial, that the messenger, you can insult him, <laughs> but you, you have to let him go and bring the message back. But Duryodhana, being a rascal, everyone knows, he thought, okay, we'll capture Krishna. And then we won't have to, then they'll be, the Pandavas will be finished. So, uh, <clears throat> Krishna came in the hall and he's in, in, he's in everyone's heart. He knows what the plan is. So, uh, when Duryodhana sent men to capture Krishna, Krishna, he's there to come to capture, he's there. And he went there to capture, he's gone there. And he was manifest in so many forms, you could see him in so many forms. So, how, how can you capture in so many forms? Then Duryodhana gave up that attempt. But the point I'm making here is that Krishna showed to Duryodhana his superiority. He, he did something which no, no one else can do. And Duryodhana thought, oh, just some kind of magic he's doing. The atheists say, show me God, but we have the prime example of Duryodhana that anything you show to him, it's, supernatural powers, he won't accept it. He's so hardened in his resolve not to be Krishna conscious. Persons who are determined not to be Krishna conscious they won't, they may say, I'm searching for the truth, but they'll never find Krishna because they don't want, they have some quixotic idea of finding the truth, but no real seriousness to understand the truth who is Krishna. 
Sometimes they have big conferences discussing philosophical conferences and they discuss it. Or, well, ecumenical councils and all this kind of thing. Ecumenical means all the churches get together and they, they all discuss. Uh, <coughs> then, Paratasvata, uh, uh, why? Because in their heart, their real desire is not to surrender to Krishna, but to enjoy this material world, to enjoy their senses, to make themselves as if they were God. They don't want to become, they can't be, they can't accept, or they don't want to accept that I am meant to be a servant of God. Therefore, he doesn't reveal himself to them. And they may even think, you see, uh, what are all these foolish theists believing in God? There's no God, they can't prove it. Well, you can't prove anything to someone who doesn't, who doesn't want to believe it. Otherwise, the proof, he's there everywhere. Everything attests to his glory. You made this nice garland. Look at this, just look at one flower, we, a very simple thing. <laughs> who can make such a thing? You can make a plastic imitation, but it won't be. You can even spray some scent on it, but it won't be the same. So beautiful. So nice smell, nicely smelling. And then reproducing. Can they make such a thing? You put a piece, this champa flower, you just take one, you cut one piece of the tree, the branch, stick it in the ground, and then after a short time that will also give flowers. Can you do that with your plastic, make a plastic stick, put it in the ground, and plastic flowers will come out of it? No way. No way. It's all Krishna has made everything. So we can see Krishna, he's, 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 well, we may say, what about all the nasty things in the world? Well, yeah, that also comes from Krishna. Sadasat Chaham Arjuna, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Everything that is good, everything that is bad, it's all a manifestation of Krishna. Everything comes from him. So he is visible to the eyes of all. And those people who are fortunate, they're pious, they were, they were, when they see Krishna, they appreciate, oh, how nice. Krishna, on the plea of uh, acting as a human being, he would travel between Dwaraka, where he was living. He would go up and down between Dwaraka and then up to Hastinapur and visit the Pandavas, and then all the people on the way, they would see. He visited so many places, if we see in Krishna Leela, how many places he has visited when he was here personally present. Of course, he appeared in Mathura, Vrindavan, <coughs> then he went to Dwaraka, uh, then he, he visited the, uh, the place of Bhishmaka, to this Vidharva, he visited this. Uh, what's the name of Rukmini's birthplace? Lokanath Maharaj. He, his followers, they all know. I just can't remember just now. Just anyone can think off the top of their head. Kundina, Kundina, that's it. No, no. What did you say? Aravadi. That's that's Maharaj's birthplace. Yeah. Kundina, Kundina is the. Yeah, that's the place of Rukmini. And then to get his different queens, he went to different places. Uh, uh, while he was here on this planet, he visited the heavenly planets. He visited the lower planets to see Bali Maharaj. He visited, he went all the way up to Navadweep to rescue his devotee, Bhim Sain, from the vicious attack of the Samudra Sena, one king. This is related by Srila Bhaktivinoda you know, Thako. Uh, so many places. He went, uh, he went all the way to the Mahavishnu Loka. <laughs> when uh, Mahavishnu captured all the sons of the Brahmana, they were dying and bo being born. Sorry, being born and dying immediately. So many places. He went to Mithila to visit the uh, 
Shruta Dev and Bahulashva, the two devotees there. But the point is, in all these places, so many people would see him, and on the way also, so many people would see him, and they get a chance to serve him and his devotees. As he's traveling, he'd go with various sages, and sometimes he'd travel with all his queens, and there'd be a big retinue, and then people would bring water and food and arrange for them to stay. And in so many ways, he made himself visible. Maybe some of us, we're fortunate enough now to be in Krishna's service because who knows? I might have been some snake that was wandering and without knowing, I crawled on the land where Krishna's devotees had just walked. And as the, uh, as the uh, good fortune of getting the dust of the Vaishnava's feet on my body, therefore I could get the chance to now be among all of you devotees. You're the same way you're all walking here and there, and the snakes are also crawling here and there. They're getting the, they're getting the dust of the lotus feet of the Vaishnavas on their bodies. So Krishna is so kind, he makes himself visible. Qualified, not qualified. The only qualification is to have little faith and not be envious. And then if we hear, we can start to see Krishna everywhere. <clears throat> and then when we become completely pure, then we'll see Krishna everywhere all the time. Primandana churita bhakti vilochanena santasa daiva hridiyeshu vilokayanti yang shama sundara machintya guna swarupam govindamadi purusham tamaham bhajami the great pure devotees, they see always within their heart the form of Shamasan, the blackish and very beautiful, composed of transcendental, inconceivable, divine qualities. <coughs> they see always within their heart, not only within their heart, everywhere. Stavara jangam deki, deke, ina deke tar murtis, sabatra. What is that? Savatra hoi tar, svurta hoi tar, ishtadeva murti. They see the pure devotees, they see a tree, they say, oh, it's Krishna's tree. They see the wind, they think of Bhagavad Gita, vayu sarvatra go mahan. He's just like the air is spread everywhere, all over the earth. The Krishna is spread everywhere. <coughs> So Krishna, he is uh, everywhere and we want to see him. But our acharyas have taught, don't be too anxious to see, be anxious to serve. Be anxious to serve him. Then when he becomes very happy to see you, that is the perfection of your life. Otherwise, even demons like Duryodhana, they can see him, but they don't want to serve him. So better to serve him. Ah. Then we'll see him. <laughs> we'll see him everywhere. Just ah. <clears throat> When we're doing the service, we say, oh, I have to do so nicely because this is for Krishna. And Krishna will be very pleased. Krishna likes. He, he is, after all, the supreme loving person. So he reciprocates with the service of his devotees. Now, uh, another meaning is who has eyes everywhere? He sees everything. This uh, idea has come up in many names and will come up in many names of Vishnu Sahasranama. We've had the name Sarva Darshana. Here's a very similar meaning. Sahasraksha. You can follow the meaning, is it? Can you follow? Sahasraksha. Thousand eyes. Hmm. Sarva Darshana. Sees everything. Then Sarva Mukha is a name coming up. His faces are everywhere. If he has faces everywhere, it means he has eyes everywhere. Also. Uh, uh, 
uh, Sakshi. That's one of the early names in Vishnu Sastranam, name number 15. He's Sakshi, Saakshi, means with eyes, he sees everything. Sakshi. Uh, then he's Loka Dhakshaha, he oversees all the world. Uh, Sura Dhakshaha. So these are all names in Vishnu Sastranam, which all, they all give similar meanings to. Sarva Darshana. Uh, then Avyakta is another name to come. He's unmanifest means we may not directly see him, but he's seeing us. We may not directly understand him, but he understands us. So this he's he sees everything everywhere in all respects. Now just think. <coughs> How many things are there to see and from how many angles? You now, now you're, if you look just at me, you're, you'll focus on this form here. If you look behind, you'll see the fields and everything. If you move a little bit this way, you'll see a little bit differently, isn't it? If you see the clouds in the sky, you can look and see. And if you come again, in, 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 even you can't see, it's changing all the time. Especially sometimes you see there are a few clouds and then the moon or the sun is just rising or setting. And then what artwork Krishna does, how beautiful it looks. And that changes all the time. The vision is changing and from different angles. If you just look at a different angle, the same thing is exactly what one person sees and sitting next to you what he sees it's a little different because you're seeing from a different angle krishna sees from all angles at all times everything and many times we see things but it doesn't really register in our mind isn't it we might see something but we don't really think about it there's a somewhat similar example there's that I've given that the, uh, the cobbler is busy working by the side of the road. Now India is becoming modern, but for, for generations we used to see, and still going on, the cobbler will sit by the side of the road and he, he'll repair some shoes. Someone will give some shoe to repair and then with it, he'll go off into the bazaar to buy something and then he'll come back again and the work should be done and then he takes it away. And in the meantime, when he's not repairing shoes, he's making some new shoes. So the example is given that it may be that the cobbler is so absorbed in his work that the king goes past and he doesn't even notice. If the king goes past, means there'll be trumpets and soldiers and Maharaj ki jai ho and all this kind of thing. It's a big kabalte, dhum dham. It's a big, uh, it's a big show, and there'll be drums beating, and you can't, you can't not notice it. The whole idea is to make everyone notice it. In the modern age, they have the, 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 the uh, motorcade. They have cars with usually very long cars with, with some tassel on them. And they make a big noise and they make all the other cars go, get out of the way so they can go. And they make a big show if someone, someone big is coming. So that's the modern alternative. But the cobbler's working, he's so absorbed in his work, he doesn't even notice the king is going by. So if we become so absorbed in Maya, we don't even notice Krishna's there. Or if, we're, if we are so absorbed in our own personal interest, even Krishna might personally come to us, but we don't properly recognize. In that regard, there's another narration of the woman 
The women, the, the village women or the tribal women, they may go in the forest to collect firewood and then one helps another to put on the head and then they walk. I can't do. I don't know if any of you can do. These, these women, they carry huge bundles, so heavy. And they're all very skinny, but they can walk. They'll walk one mile, two miles, carrying this heavy bundle. But you, they need help to get it on their head. Other, then they can carry it. So one woman is walking in the forest, somehow she got behind from the group. And she's walking alone and she tripped and the whole bundle fell down. Ah, then what's she going to do? All the work to, to collect that bundle of wood, that will be lost. What can she do? So she's a pious woman, she calls out, Oh, Govinda, 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 Govinda. Because she's, she's devotee of Krishna, so she's calling out for Govinda, Govinda. Then a little beautiful boy comes with blackish blue body, little peacock feather in his hair, a flute tucked in his side. He says, Oh, Amma, huh? you want something? He says, Oh, what's your name? Govinda. Oh. Can you help me put this bundle of wood on my head? <laughs> oh, shall we laugh or shall we cry? <laughs> Govinda, she's calling for Govinda with such feeling and Govinda comes and all she can think is put the bundle of wood on my head again. <laughs> oh, then what else could she ask? Anything she wanted she could ask. She, she, could, ask. she could ask for permanent shelter at her lotus feet. She might say, well, I have to think of my family. She could have her whole family go to Vaikuntha immediately, but she's just so absorbed in my, what we perceive to be our immediate need that even we see Govinda, he comes directly to serve us. But actually we have to have the mood of serving him. Then we will see him. So we're living very peacefully here, but sometimes a little non-peace can be helpful for us to see God. <laughs> that sounds strange, doesn't it? What is that? Vipata Santu Tashashva Tatra Tatra Jagad Guru Bhavato Darshanam Nayai Apuna Bhava Darshana Kunti She prayed to Krishna the, all the troubles were over, Duryodhana and company are killed, the Pandavas are on the throne, so many struggles throughout their life, everything's peaceful. Govinda settled everything. So now the Pandavas are settled peacefully on their throne and Krishna is getting ready to go back to Dwarka. And she says, Krishna, just one request, could you give us some more problems? But all, her, all her life she's been praying to Krishna to protect us from all our problems. All the problems are finished. Can you give us more problems? Because if there are so many problems and dangers, then we'll always think of you. And if we think of you, then we'll see you. He has to come to his devotee. And if we see you, then we'll no longer see repeated birth and death. Anyway, in this Kali Yoga, we don't have to pray too much for problems. <laughs> Everything's a problem. Actually, that's the great mercy of Kali Yoga because actually everything's a problem in every yoga, but in Kali Yoga, we can experience it more. So he sees everything. So. Better not be an atheist, because we might think, ah, I can do anything I like, I can get away with it. Krishna sees, don't think we can get away with anything. We may think, I, I can privately do whatever I like. <laughs> no, no. Krishna sees. He's the witness. He sees everything. He also sees, taking a more positive note, if we have a sincere desire to serve him, he'll see that also. Mm. Yeah, it won't go unnoticed. He sees everything. 
Hare Krishna. Ah, uh, something more to say? There's always more to say. I'd made some notes, but I didn't look at them. I didn't see them. So, Srila uh, <clears throat> Daladev Vidya Bhushan, our most revered Gorya Vaishnav commentator, and Sri Vishnu Sahasranam says that Krishna affectionately sees all his devotees. Krishna sees everything, but he especially likes to see his devotees. He loves his devotees. Now, we may think there's so many devotees, so many great, great devotees. And who am I? I'm just someone very small. But Krishna sees. He says, Patram pushpam phalam tayam yomai bhaktya prayachati tadaham bhakti upahritam ashnami prayatatmana. If one offers me simple leaf, fruit, flower, water with devotion, Krishna says, I will accept it. That means he sees. He sees what we're doing. He's so kind. Krishna when he's taking lunch, he's in the middle of all the cowherd boys, his picnic in the forest, and he, all the cowherd boys think Krishna is seeing me. He's looking at me. So he sees them all. Then Lord Rama kills crores of demons with his arrow. He sees... They're all shooting arrows at him and he sees every arrow coming from all directions and he counteracts with his arrows and he sees all the demons all at once and kill, boop, 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 faster than we can even imagine kills them all by seeing them all. Each demon thought that Ram is attacking me alone. So they also had the same facility that the great devotees, the cowherd boys had but in a different way, an opposite way. Hope to see you later. Hare Krishna. Krishna sees us all the time.